in the highly revised book of Revelations in the Bible, <clears throat> which, of course, is a book of many books, so there's that. Anyway, it states, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And, of course, we'll find out later in this video that God actually means good, which puts into a different context when someone says something like, God is good. Of course, nowadays, it's becoming more and more apparent exactly what it means by the Lamb when it talks about that particular entity with all of the derisive or derogatory or whatever word you want to use uh, insults that are used by certain members of society, shall we say, about the masses of the populace and how uh, weak and inconsequential and easy it is to abuse and swindle and rob and uh, murder them. Being the sheeple, those people who ignorantly go around following the edicts of criminals and liars. Now, in the TV series Fraser, in uh, episode 16 of season 9, there is a description, I suppose, if you can call it that, of the disability scam that's going on today. And according to IMBD, Fraser is unimpressed when his scheming, scamming ex brother in law, Michael Keaton, rolls in for a visit, now in a wheelchair, and claims to be a reformed, God fearing man who needs money for a revival ministry. So there you get the, to use a very irritating word that is uh, generally seen as the property of propagandistic academics in the university system today, the juxtaposition of a preacher being a quote-unquote pastor, pastoral shepherd of a flock of sheep, right, who is in a wheelchair, pretending to be in a wheelchair anyway, for the purposes of um, embedding and emotional embedding that comes with quote-unquote disability, where it is today elevated over being healthy and capable. Oh, uh, you're just normal, is what someone would say, whereas such and such person is disabled and therefore needs all of this quote-unquote assistance, right? Special privileges and perks and things like that. Anyway, it's uh, God-fearing, right? God means good. Of course, this tactic, hiding under the guise of quote-unquote disability, that particular word that has been emotionally embedded into the habits and behavior of the populace, is very well known and goes back a long ways. FDR, for instance, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was seen visibly in a wheelchair and then had a statue made of him in a wheelchair, right? A statue not of him standing or showing him to be in a position of capability, no, uh, in a wheelchair. Hence the need to embed that perspective into the minds of the quote-unquote masses or the sheeple, sheep people. Now, another individual who is involved in the, a member in high up, higher ranking or, or whatever you want to say, member in the U.S. government corporation is Diane Feinstein, and of course she was visibly going around in wheelchairs as well. Strom Thurmond, another corrupt, well, I mean, these people are, are all corrupt in some way because they couldn't be in these positions if they weren't, but they are really just figureheads and spokespeople. They don't have any power. But Strom Thurmond, another senator, or representative, or whatever the hell you want to call them, because they're all frontmen. Well, he was seen rolling around in a wheelchair as well. And then, naturally, there is the public presence of the gov Texas governor, Greg Abbott, also rolling around in a wheelchair and constantly surrounded by all of these interestingly woke and uh, creepy, corrupt people. Then there's that... Uh, other senator individual person, uh, Cawthorn, 
I believe Madison Cawthorn is the name of that alleged person, who also goes around in a wheelchair very visibly, very publicly, and very emphasized. Then naturally on on the uh, during the 2020 period of unrest or whatever you want to call it, staged conflict. There, of course, was the Garrett Foster incident in which a BLM dude with a, a gun got shot um, by allegedly a person from the army. And, of course, this stuff is all staged and all for the cameras, or it's public theater, essentially. But his uh, alleged girlfriend, who was black, of course, naturally, because that's also another thing we have to focus on, is appearance of people, was also in a wheelchair. However, this idea of hiding with sheep's clothing, or wearing sheep's clothing, you know, that same phrase, wolves in sheep's clothing, right? Well... That takes on a different angle when we look at the Jillian Maxwell Epstein case, the alleged case, which also appears like public theater, in which she essentially was able to avoid justice based off of the concept of state of mind not being uh, culpable because of a lack of state of mind. And the way that it was argued was that she, the crimes that she had been charged with or had been accused of were so heinous that no individual could possibly be of the state of mind to commit, if you can imagine that. But the whole case was a public spectacle with the design of embedding the idea, the concept of mens rea or state of mind and the inability for somebody who is quote unquote disabled to commit a crime and therefore can't be held accountable for criminal activity. This puts into context the idea behind Biden, who appears to be completely in, incapacitated cognitively, who has no real level of sanity or understanding of you know where he is or what he's doing. And this naturally goes into context of all of the other dis visible disabilities that we saw. And the idea of embedding state of mind as a way to escape criminal culpability. This very idea was posited in the movie Batman Begins, which highlighted the works of Scarecrow, who poisoned the Gotham City, fictional Gotham City place, which obviously looks very similar to many cities today where he used a toxic substance, a, a gas, to make people go crazy, or appear to go crazy anyway. And this first was done with a mobster named Carmine Falcone, who pled insanity to avoid being uh, held accountable for crimes in the fraudulent justice system that we have today, represented fictionally here, of course. Next, in Revelations, again, <clears throat> it states, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So there we get an understanding of exactly what they're trying to avoid, what they're trying to hide from. Right? Hiding under the mountains and rocks to have them fall on them, and hide them from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And of course you notice the last part, and who shall be able to stand, and thus the wheelchair disability embedding is a joke that has to do specifically with this section of Revelations. So let's look at who they are that will face the wrath of the Lamb. In chapter 17 of Revelations, we get a description of the entity called the Whore of Babylon. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And of course, that imagery right there conjures up the idea of the Statue of Liberty, or the Statue of Libertas, the Roman goddess that both bestows and takes away liberty. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hands, full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs and of, of Jesus. By the way, Jesus is Je suis in French, which means I am. So that's something to notice because this book is heavily revised and twisted for obvious reasons. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten hordes. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And of course, notice that the woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet color, <coughs> decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, with a golden cup in her hand. And she rides a scarlet-colored beast. In continuation, it says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That seems like that's been edited quite a bit. And the beast that was, and is not, and even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And of course, a lot of the stuff in Revelations is all about coded messaging and uh, riddles. And the ten heads which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and they that are with him are called the, and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall ha hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts good, right? For good hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of good shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that of the great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth otherwise known as the Vatican. So this puts into context the alleged Red Shoes Club, when, which relates, of course, to the clothing of scarlet and the scarlet color of the beast. In addition, there is the red carpet in which celebrities walk upon to have their, you know, to have their obsessive paparazzi group uh, take um, way too many pictures and all of a sudden us. Uh, nonsense, which of course relates to the scarlet colored beast again. And then there's the Pope, naturally, which who wears red shoes with uh, white clothing, which of course is also uh, like lined, you know, broidered with gold and all of these uh, precious stones and other things like that. And he wears red gloves and other scarlet colored robes and things like that and as do the bishops and we notice all of the precious stones and their their rings and, and their jewelry and all these other symbols and raiment that correlates to the whore of babylon's description and also of course this clearly talking about the vatican being the city to which all you know kings fornicate and whatnot. Also, we should notice that the curtain on a theater is scarlet, like a scarlet robe or a scarlet raiment that the whore of Babylon is dressed up in. Next in Revelations, we look at a passage where it states a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. A seal is a round wax indent 
which is placed upon letters or correspondence and possibly even, of course, books. But the seal generally has some sort of stylized design in it that relates to the authenticity of the sender. Now, we're all very well aware with the Starbucks logo, <clears throat> which is a circular pattern with a symbol in it and it relates to that same concept of the seal, except it takes on a different form today where it's stamped onto various uh, merchandise as a way to brand. And again, a brand usually uh, is a mark that is placed on cattle or something else. But it also relates to the concept of the seal where the symbol relates to the sender. Now, there's a lot of seals today that we might not think about so much when we spot them, such as the seal of the President of the United Nations Republic, appears very similar to the seal of the President of the United States. And there's a lot of correlations when it comes to international global UN seals and those that are used in this nation. There's, of course, the United Nations seal, which is strikingly blue and white. It's that light uh, sky blue with white. These same color spectrums, this color spectrum or pattern of color and symbology will also be found in the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, which is equally blue and white, and of course the Department of Health and Human Services, and naturally these things all appear similar to one another. Air Force One, at least the, the one that wasn't flown by Trump anyway, is blue and white. It has that same strikingly contrasting UN color spectrum to it. Now, the seal for the Vatican contains the symbol that you can find on their flag, which are two keys with the stacked crown uh, hat thing that they wear, right? That conical hat that we've all seen that has stacked crowns, one atop the other, relates to the Whore of Babylon, of course, the city with which all kings fornicate, right? And, of course, the Vatican is known for crowning kings, for the coronation, or the crowning. However, keys are used to seal things away, and it's rather ironic that they are included on a seal, which is used for sealing or closing something. Back in Revelations, it says, And hast made us unto our God, kings, and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And there in that passage, you get an understanding of how the word good has been changed to mean this strange entity, right? This, this overarching entity, whereas it actually means more of like a spirit of something. So if we translate that correctly, it would say, and hast made us unto our good kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, versus being related to bad kings and priests. See, the idea of a king and a priest has been obfuscated, it has been infiltrated, and it has been twisted to mean something evil. And so the lamb, in this context, is supposed to restore the positions, like a president, right, to make it what it was supposed to be before it was taken over and turned into a tool to be wielded by the Whore of Babylon or the Vatican. And it also says, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. So that's a lot. And in this context, I don't entirely know what the word angel means. We've obviously been mistaught about nearly every word under the sun by the system that doesn't want us to understand what is being taught here because it will bring forth the wrath of the Lamb onto them. These thousands and tens of thousands and ten thousands and thousands and thousands are, as far as I can tell, the individuals who no longer have corporeal form. What Revelations is telling you, essentially, is that you cannot die. That your body is simply a conduit, and when your body dies, you continue to exist on. And so here you have the angels 
about the throne, which are beyond counting, essentially. Because they're every single individual who doesn't have 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 body anymore. And naturally, they make up the lamb. The human entity that is not the body makes up the lamb. And so when you understand that the wrath of the lamb relates to good, it sort of puts things better into a easier to understand rather than the way that they teach it, which is that the lamb is uh, Jesus Christ, and Jesus, of course, being Je suis from the French, I am. And that his wrath of a single individual will happen, and you just kind of have to sit around and wait for it. Well, of course, they would teach something like that because they don't want everybody to realize that the multitude will bring the wrath of the Lamb on them, and they will have no place to hide. And the only way for them to stop that is to convince the multitude to sit around and do nothing. So let's look at this from a different angle. We can go ahead and look at Eagle Pass. And across the border from Eagle Pass in Texas is Piedras Negras. Of course, Eagle Pass has become relatively famous of late with all of the hoopla, the fanfare of individuals going down, such as Trump and uh, obviously the governor with his wheel mobile, where he can't stand, allegedly. Anyway, it's been in the news a lot lately, so-called news. Piedras Negras means black rock, which is or black stone, which is the name for a enormous uh, company that allegedly controls most of the world today. Now you have Blackstonian law, and what's interesting about this seal is that it's black with a scales, which relates to the black horse and rider, where the rider carries a pair of scales. William Blackstone was a black clothed, and you can also notice that he wears scarlet raiment around his shoulders, a uh, judge individual from England. And a lot of the cabal, or the whatever you want to call them, but the followers of the Whore of Babylon, or the worshippers of the Vatican and all that nonsense, all little corrupt twits that think that they run the world and the quote-unquote sheeple that they can abuse to no end. Well, he is said by them to be the godfather of uh, American law because he's English and a lot of their stuff is based off English law, which is based off of Vatican law, which goes back to the manipulation of the true law, where they see it as their tool to wield against the sheeple, the multitude, but it doesn't apply to them. However, when the sheeple come um, to awaken and become the wrath of the lamb, well, that law becomes wielded against them. They don't want that to happen, and so naturally you have all of this imagery around the black stone. Of course, black ops is what we call somebody who is engaging in or military operation in secret. Then there's the CEO Schwartzman, Steve Schwartzman. Schwartz means black in German. And he is allegedly the CEO of the company Blackstone. And then there's the mercenary group called Blackwater, which engaged in black ops, likely on behalf of Blackrock or Blackstone. But who knows, these signs and symbols are replete throughout all of their activities and should be their undoing because this stuff becomes extremely obvious based off of their use of symbols and their little jokes and pranks they like to play especially with regards to the quote-unquote sheeple that they so despise and yet seek to rule. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, uh, subscribe to my channels, join my newly made Discord, and there are free books available at the links. Also, if you so desire, you may support my work at PayPal or Cash App.